Just a quick warning, not a language warning, anything like that. This really isn't a hammer forming video, it's really a press forming video, but it started out yesterday as a hammer forming video, and so just to prevent confusion, I kept calling it a hammer forming video. Okay, so I uh, plasma cut out a uh, metal, you know, blank to uh, use this. I use actually this, uh, yeah, that piece to as a pattern, so it actually came out quite decent. Drilled a whole bunch of holes, that's going to be to retain this in here. And uh, I guess now i got to put it together. So, let's see how we go here. I'm going to have to, uh, when I was drilling it out, I didn't have backing on the corners and it, it uh, pushed the uh, material out. Uh, but uh, I'm going to have to countersink all these screws, but uh, apart from that, I'll screw this thing together with, oh, I don't know, 30 screws. <laughs> and we'll see how we go here. So there's my, uh, well, I can't really call it a hammer form, but it is what it's supposed to be, because I'm going to use this for pressing. But uh, I, uh, I got a whole bunch of screws all the way around the edge to brace it up. Uh, unfortunately, I ran out. I was about five short, and I got nothing around here, so I'm going to still give it a go. Uh, I'm pressing from, obviously, this side is meant to be the flat side, so that's facing down, and this will be the side I'll press from. I'll put my little uh, ham steak in here, and I'll put some spacers. Some, uh, It's approximately half an inch all the way around, so I'll get some nuts that are approximately that... Uh, that depth width, whatever you want to call it, and uh, and space it around it. And I'll press down on this. I'll use another one. I've got some scrap pieces of these uh, biscuits here, and uh, and we'll uh, give this a go right now. I'm not going to wait until tomorrow. You know it's getting dark out there. You know, it actually wasn't a bad day out, but that day is is gone. So I want to get out here and. I want to go in and actually have a bite to eat, but anyways. Hey, quit eating the apple tree, fuckers. Anyways. Okay, so there's my press, such as it is. 30 ton, should be plenty good enough for this. I don't expect that this stuff would hold up to even one ton of pressure, but we'll see, I got a good plate here. Really, it'd be nice to have another one. But I've got my little nuts of spacers. Hopefully I won't end up squishing into the metal, but we'll We'll see. If, if that ends up being a problem, then I'll figure out something else, but this is just a test. Now I will put a couple of those on top of this, and now I'm going to have a bit of a trouble for distributing the weight. Because obviously I can't just press directly on this, it would never hold up. It would be nice to have another one of these plates. Yeah, I might have to go to Princess Auto tomorrow. I hate to rush this sort of thing, you know, and fail on the first try. For a simple reason. Let me look around and see what I got else. Okay, so it might look like a bit of a... Hmm, what rhymes with cluster duck? Um, but it should be okay. This is an incredible pressure that we're doing. I actually do have a gauge so I can watch that. So if this is under a hell of a lot of pressure, I won't eat it. Uh -oh. I think I got a oil leak on my uh, reservoir here. That couldn't have come from anything other than this. Well, I guess we're going to see if this is going to work today. Ram them down. Okay, I'll pause you guys and uh, and uh, and uh, we'll come back to this in a second here. Well, I'm definitely running out of hydraulic fluid in that thing. It's all leaking away somewhere. But I still managed to uh, do a little bit of pressing here. As you can see, I didn't quite get it square, I don't think. But looks certainly looks better than the... Uh, than the other one did, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit further. Let's see how we go. This plate isn't quite big enough for what I'm doing, Oops. but uh, I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna see if I can push it down. Uh, well, I'm gonna press my luck, and I'm gonna try, try and do the whole the full half inch, and we'll see. Might break my uh, hammer, well, my form, but uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, so that's the current configuration, and I'm out of fluid. I can't press any further. Which is frustrating, but I wouldn't be able to go much further anyways because those blocks, those are uh, bars. I don't want to call them plates. Are coming close to those screws. Um, so I'm going to grab another one of these blank scraps, 
put it in between there. It gives me a little bit more height. Gives me more time before I run out of fluid. I don't know what kind of fluid goes in here. I'm going to have to find the owner's manual for it. Or download it online and then fill it up again. I don't know where it's leaking from. You know, the knob was wet, so you kind of think it was the knob that was leaking. Anyways, let's get doing something. I want to prove, do my proof of concept before uh, I knock off tonight. Okay, there you go. I've uh, pressed the depression half an inch in. We are reading just over five tons of pressure. Um, it was starting to creak a bit when I got about to uh, about 50 thou left to press. So I think if I do this uh, with another one, if this turns out well and I do the next one for the, this is the one for the, better be the one for the passenger side. I'm pretty sure. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, if this looks good, I'll do another one for the passenger side tomorrow, and, uh, and or sorry, driver's side tomorrow, jeez, and uh, yeah, I'm getting punchy, um, and uh, and then uh, I won't press it as far, it doesn't need to be as far as I did, it doesn't need to be the full half inch, um, so anyways, I'll take this off and we'll have a look at it. Okay, there we go, no visible damage to the dies here, not to this one. And that looks, certainly doesn't look too bad. I'm not unhappy with that. You can see where uh, where it started to pull in. There's an alignment hole I had drilled here. And you can see where it actually started to pull into the, uh, into the uh, space here. I suspect that probably a lot of these holes have been elongated around the edge. We'll see how we go. It had to have some sort of clamping around the edge, even if it wasn't you know a million screws like this if I would have been well these were on sale so I bought like six or eight of these today but they would have made it a little bit more uh, harder to to press because this was a hell of a lot easier way of doing it. Let's take all these out and I'm just looking for any damage. You can see the mark from where the edge of the uh, press plate was. I'm pretty happy with that. That actually looks I think not too bad. So let's take this out and I'll show you guys what it, uh, how it turned out. There you go guys, that actually turned out really well. It's slightly different height from front to rear. I'm not surprised. You could put more pressure here than there because this is a, forming a much uh, wider area. That's why if I was gonna do this again, um, I would be smarter to find what's called the centroid or the center of mass of this location because that would in all likelihood be the best place to push at. And it also help to have, you know, like one big plate on the top and the bottom to even out the pressure. Uh, no damage to uh, either uh, either the, the top or the bottom or to the, to the ham stake here. Um, I'd say this looks like this turned out pretty damn good. And I don't know that it would be uh, really obvious that it was uh, that it was a repair piece, which is like what I said before. Now I still have more work to do on it. Obviously, I have to flip the uh, the uh, or uh, roll the edges uh, like so. Um, now, all of these uh, you um, before I unwrap this, I think I said that uh, I expect that these holes elongated, and you can see that some of them did. It should be pretty obvious there. Some of them didn't actually. Um, that puckered a bit there because if you really think about it, I've just pulled all the metal into here. So in, a, in effect, I've pulled this piece together as well, even though it was trapped by the, uh, by the metal. This actually, this piece was standing just like the outside of it. Uh, I could have made a bigger, slightly bigger piece and, you know, had screws going all the way around and it probably would have pulled a little bit more evenly. But hey, I'm not going to complain. That looks pretty good to me. You know, it looks like it, it fits with uh, with my idea here. All of these screw holes, for the most part, uh, should be outside of the uh, lip that's going to be rolled over. It looks like I put a little bit more on that side than I did on that side. This side doesn't matter because that's going to be tr trimmed flush with this edge. And it would probably even be trimmed more, actually. But uh, overall, I'm very, very, very satisfied with how that turned out. I think that is a very viable way of forming it. 
Now for the technical sticklers out there, I'm still calling this a hammer forming video even though it was, you know, press forming. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's what I started out doing and that's, uh, there still will be more hammer forming for forming the, the, the uh, edges here. But you can see, when you compare the two pieces, I granted this is for opposite sides, but that looks it looks factory, in my opinion. It looks factory, whereas this, you know, would have been adequate for something underneath the body. Uh, this, I wouldn't have a problem doing this on a piece that was uh, that was going to be seen all the time, because that turned out quite quite well. Anyways, it's getting pretty late. It's uh, pitch black out there, and and I would like to go in and have a bite to eat, and actually upload this video before midnight. So I will see you guys tomorrow, and uh, we'll try the passenger side next. Although, you know what I will do, is I actually might, um, I might cut, trim this to shape, and hammer form this, actually hammer form the edges of this one, so that I can get the uh, final result, and uh, shrink, like what Greg was saying, shrink there, right at that pie cut. Because I do have a shrinker stretcher. These also were Kenco tools, you know, as you'll see in the other video. Uh, these are made in the USA, supporting my brothers to the south. As was, well, I'm not sure what the bread that one was made. That looks like that could all be made locally, to be honest with you, because you just could have, could have uh, uh, had any shop uh, flame cut or plasma cut or whatever, laser cut. You know, the big plate and uh, everything else is uh, is stock, you know, apart from these bits here being machined. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> I'm getting punchy, like I said, and uh, I'll let you guys go.